Ready? All right, guys, here it is. Eight months in the making, finally done. I don't remember what I was supposed to say. <laughs> What's up, guys? This is an LJ. We're gonna do what we've dubbed as our super build on it. from TMR. Done. Let's go wheel it. So what do you want here? Do you weld it on the old one that you just cut off? <laughs> 42, it, it takes up a lot of this this wheel well as it is. This is just something I'm doing for fun, so. For all you uh, LJ lovers. Yeah. Let's change. <laughs> we gotta get the up control arms welded up. You already opened these? Yep. Oh, Taking Fonzie all the way apart. Oh no, it's falling down. I shove in reverse and back up. I can't believe nobody noticed this and I, I, I don't really want to tell on myself. Guys, Mike's working in the shop. Deeper, harder, Deeper. faster. Stop it. <laughs> His cruise control will be cruising while he controls the throttle. Start at the top? Yep. Okay. All right, guys, there it is. Eight months in the making, and Fonzie's finally done. Some of you guys have been following along and have seen some of the build series on this, and some of you haven't. So today we're gonna do a recap on it, show you all the things that we've done to it, the ins and the outs, the ups and the downs. Um, so let's just get started. So this is an o so this is an 04 LJ. It came to us on a very worn out Rubicon Express lift kit, some old, probably 20 year old, 33 inch tires, just in need of some love. Transmission was not working. It, it literally came in here on a wrecker and now it looks like this. So, so now we're gonna check out under the hood, show you some of the things we've done. So we pulled out the old wore out four liter, an automatic transmission that was behind it and stock transfer case. And we installed a brand new Crate 5.3, Turbo 400, and an Atlas transfer case. The 5.3 is stock other than the intake. The customer wants to kind of get a feel for a V8, and, and then we may end up doing some things to it later down the road, but for now it is just a, a stock 5.3. It did make 203 horsepower to the rear wheels, so. Not bad for a stock 5.3. Obviously we had to change everything out under the hood from the radiator, intake, all, you know, everything. Custom headers, custom exhaust, custom braided stainless steel brake lines. We went with a PSI harness and computer for engine management. It's pretty much stock under here. This Jeep is on full hydro, so it is a, it's not a hydro assist, it's, it's got one ram that acts as the tie rod. We'll show you that here in a minute. We tried to keep it as clean as we could under here, as simple as we could. The idea behind a lot of our builds is to be able to, if something happens out on the trail, whether we're in Moab, Sand Hollow, or just at our local park, um, to be able to go to the hardware store and purchase parts to fix it so that we don't have to special order things and let it ruin a week or two of vacation just because of some simple part. So, uh, we really try to keep all of that in mind when we're building these. So like I said, we are running a full hydraulic steering setup from PSC. It is an eight inch ram that literally that is your steering. 
There is no mechanical steering from the steering wheel to the tires. It's all hydraulic. Um, really good for off-road. Not the best for something that you're going to drive on the street, so I highly don't recommend. If you plan on driving it every day, don't run this. Just do the hydro assist. Um, but this full hydro steering will assist in turning these massive 42-inch Nitto trail grapplers, and they are wrapped around the KMC grenade wheel. All polished aluminum, looks super killer on this Jeep. Matches all the other aluminum that we've got going on with the control arms, the ORIs, um, and the steering. So, so as we move to the interior, um, one of the first things you'll probably notice is the shifter setup. This is a custom console that we made here at Off-Road Addiction to accommodate the Atlas transfer case shifters as well as the Turbo 400 three-speed shifter. Um, this is a winner's sidewinder shifter. Um, the transmission is a reverse valve body so that you can go from first to reverse without any kind of hiccups or questions. So if he gets in a pickle on it on an incline, he can put it in reverse and back out of it real quick. So makes that pretty simple. Um, we, we've got a Genrite fastback cage in it with their Genrite aluminum top. Super nice cage, high quality stuff. Running a Switch Pro here. Um, he doesn't have a whole lot yet. He may eventually get some more lights, but right now it's just mainly to power the air compressor so that you can air these 42s up and get back out on the road and head to the next trail or work or coffee shop or wherever he's going. As far as the dash goes, obviously running an aftermarket motor Having the factory dash is not impossible, but much more complicated. So we went with the uh, Holly Pro Dash um, in the, the seven inch version and had a company custom make us a bezel to fit in there. Um, so he can, he can see all of his important details while he's uh, on the trail or driving down the road. Um, as we move back, we've got the Generite 20 gallon fuel cell running the TJ fuel pump seems to be working pretty good and then we obviously we made some uh, custom mounts for this 42 inch spare tire and I know a lot of people are like why are you carrying a 42 inch spare tire well in case we have a flat duh I don't know why else you would um, got a little two gallon gas can here just in case you run out of fuel you never know um, just like the JK's we fully boxed in the body here so that if he wants to put the hard top back on this thing and drive it to church on Sunday morning, he doesn't have to worry about getting muddy when it's raining outside. Or if he wants to hit a trail before he goes to church, whatever, um, he can do it and stay clean. Uh, we ran the fuel fill out the back here with enough room to be able to get in there with the hard top on. I know a lot of you guys will give us some flack about having that on the interior. The top won't be on this very much. I can promise you that but you never know. So that's kind of it on the interior. If you notice, we got OA uh, corner armor. We've stretched the wheels, the, the rear axle back about six inches. So we built custom armor to accommodate that opening and uh, protect him in case he ever gets into anything on the trail. is ridiculous. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. All right, so now we're underneath this killer LJ. I need you guys to not talk. Thank you, appreciate it. Filming in session. All right guys, so here we are under this killer LJ. Um, as you can tell, we've got a massive skid plate covering the, from the engine all the way Back to the transfer case. Um, this thing is fully protected. Up front, we're running a Dana 60, 99 to 04 Dana 60. Uh, it's got 538 gears in it. Of course, we run nothing but Adams drive shafts. Um, same two inch aluminum control arms that we run on our JK Super Builds. Um, this is probably one of the only TJ LJs that you will see that is fully triangulated underneath the front end of these. Most guys are running 
three links with track bars, but I spent a lot of time making sure that, that we could have a fully triangulated front suspension and not have to run a track bar. This thing, I, I personally got to put 500 miles on this Jeep and it really, it drives amazing. Um, it, it's, you should come drive it. He might let you. Like I said earlier, custom exhaust. Um, back to a Magnaflow um, muffler dumped right after the skid plate here. Um, triangulated rear four link. Keeps everything nice and square. A lot of time spent on geometry, making sure that this suspension is going to do exactly what we want to do in the in in the type of wheeling that we do. Um, we we use a lot of the same um, stuff that we've used in um, the JK stuff, and we 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 built the same style of cross member to support the ORI towers to keep any deflection from happening. Um, these OR towers don't have to be fringed into the frame because we ran a moto built back half kit which makes the rear of the frame a lot narrower and helps help keep us from having to do that. Um, we also are running a moto built front half kit on this as well uh, which did create a lot of challenges when it came to um, getting the motor set into place and having enough room for control arms and exhaust and all of that good stuff, drive shafts, all that fun stuff. So. Like I said, we try to keep things as simple as possible um, so that we can, um, they're easy to work on and they function properly. Um, this does have 14 inch ORIs all the way around. As you can tell, they have 14 inches of travel. Um, moto built front fenders help to make room for the, not moto built, I'm sorry, metal cloaks. Uh, front fenders help make room for the 42s. With the custom with the custom trimmage for steering yeah if you step back this thing flexes like crazy it is insane okay so that's kind of the, the the walk around on this if you're new to the channel haven't seen a lot of our videos there is a complete playlist on this so that go watch all those that might answer any of the questions that you might have if you still have questions leave comments we'll answer those questions um, and most of all if you want us to do this to your Jeep give us a call We'll get you on the schedule and we'll get you a uh, LJ built. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And last but not least, we'll see you out on the trail. It's nerve wracking when you got all these people watching you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The official tape measure. We gotta see where it lands on the chart. Ho, ho, ho. I am at 48 and a half inches. 48 and a half inches. White Widow is no longer the king. Fonzie taking, taking the lead. <laughs> Do I just put it up there? <laughs> Half inch. That's all it takes. <laughs>